In this section, we'll discuss how to write the force uh, for a system as the gradient of a potential energy function. In principle, uh, the potential energy function can be dependent upon all three positional coordinates, x, y, and z. And so if you want to calculate what the force is due to a particular potential energy function, you need to take the negative gradient of that potential energy function. And that'll give you a vector as described in the book. But, but when you have three coordinates uh, to describe that potential energy function, it can be a little tricky to visualize what the derivative uh, of the potential energy function is going to look like. And so we're going to narrow our focus uh, to a very illustrative example where we use two of the coordinates, x and y, to specify the position. And the third coordinate, it, that's going to be related to the potential energy function directly. The potential energy function we're going to use is gravitational potential near the surface of the Earth. And so, uh, as you recall, the gravitational potential energy there is the mass of the particle times the gravitational acceleration times height. So here we're going to use z as our height coordinate. And we're going to imagine that our z coordinate uh, is a function of x and y. Let me show you what that means. So pretend you go to a, a park uh, that has a lot of nice rolling hills in it. And in this case, uh, the rolling hills, uh, those are actually going to map out our potential energy function. Because the potential energy is proportional to the height z, the hills actually represent graphically the potential energy function. Where you're at the top of a hill, when z is large, that's when you have a large potential energy. And when you're at the bottom of a hill in a trough and z is small, that's where you have a small potential energy. And so in this case, because we're restricting our uh, coordinates just to x and y, we're, de we're defining the uh, height above some reference surface uh, z to be a function of x and y and so you can run up and down the different hills moving along x and y and if you give me an x and a y position I can tell you exactly what the z value is and therefore I can estimate exactly what my potential energy is. So let's look at one specific hill and we're going to restrict right now we're going to restrict the x coordinate to be equal to zero and so our hill looks like this with x fixed at zero the height uh, of the hill z is, is drawn there as a function of y. Now, as I said earlier, the potential energy function is proportional to z. And so we can write our potential energy u as mg times z uh, of x equals 0 and then y. If you look at this hill, you'll notice, of course, on the right-hand side of the hill, it, ha it slopes downward. And so we intuitively expect that the gravitational force is going to pull us down toward positive y. So it's going to drive us toward the right into positive y. If we calculate the slope of the potential energy function, du by dy, and set x equal to 0, that's equivalent to calculating the y derivative of the z coordinate. You can see the equality there. Uh, now, of course, the slope is negative on the right-hand side of the hill. So dz by dy that's going to be less than zero. And so if that were all there was to it in order to calculate the gravitational acceleration, the force from the potential, that would tell us that uh, gravitational force was going to pull into the negative y direction since that derivative is negative. But remember that the force is the negative gradient of the potential energy function. And so we need to not only calculate the derivative of y with this, excuse me, the derivative of u with respect to y, we need to put a minus sign in front of it. And when we do that, we can see with a negative slope here that the y component of the gravitational force, fg, the y component of that force is going to be minus mg times dz by dy. dz by dy is negative. And so when you put a minus sign in front, you get a positive force. So that means that the force, the component of the force from gravity, pulls into the positive y direction. In other words, the y component of the gravitational force points like this. So that's exactly what we expect intuitively. If you were perched on the side of the hill like this, you would feel a pull from gravity into the positive y direction. And now, rather than being near the peak of a hill, imagine that you're down uh, in the trough between two hills. So your uh, z coordinate looks like this. So you're kind of at the bottom of this u. Uh, in this case, the slope very near the bottom is, is zero. And so, the negative y derivative of the potential energy function, remember that's going to be minus mg dz by dy at x fixed equal to 0. Since dz by dy is 0, that is the slope here is 0, 
there is no force. And that's exactly consistent with what we expect. Gravitational pull is not going to pull you into the positive or negative y directions when you're at the bottom of the hill. Now let's generalize this discussion to two positional coordinates. So imagine we have a, a, a nice rounded hill. So this uh, little sketch is meant to represent a rounded hill. So we can consider both the x and the y coordinates. Um, and we're going to imagine that we're perched on the side of the hill uh, over there as shown by the dot. If we look at the hill from above, you can see what I mean. So here we're perched on the side of the hill there. The slope of the hill at that point, that slope points into positive y and negative x. And so what we expect then is that the gravitational force is going to pull us toward that direction. In other words, the x component of the gravitational force should be negative and the y component should be positive. And so again, to calculate the force vector, we take the negative gradient of the potential energy function. So now we need to calculate x and a y component for our force. So the way we do that is we take a partial derivative of the potential energy function with respect to x, multiply that by x hat, and then a partial derivative of the u function with respect to y and multiply that by y hat. All these partial derivatives mean is you take a derivative of the u function with respect to x, but hold y fixed at some value. Same is true for the y component. And so what we're asking here basically is, what is the component of the slope along the x direction, what is the component of the slope along the y direction? And remember that our potential energy function is just proportional to the z coordinate. And so those partial derivatives of u with respect to x and with respect to y are really the same as taking uh, x and y derivatives, partial derivatives of the z function. So let's think about what those partial derivatives look like. Here's our hill as seen from above. Now you can see that if you move along the positive x direction into this direction here, you'll be climbing slightly uphill. You can see that moving in this direction, the slope is positive, and so you're going to be moving slightly uphill uh, if you try to climb in a positive x direction. And so what that means is the partial derivative of z with respect to x, that's a positive number. That's a positive number, and therefore the negative of that partial derivative will give us a negative number. In other words, the x component of the gravitational force will be negative. And what that means is the gravitational force at that point on the hill is going to drive you toward negative x values. And sure enough, that's exactly what we expect. We expect that the gravitational force is going to push you in that direction. We can see that that is into the negative x direction. You're going to be moving downhill if you move only along the positive y direction. And so then that means that the y derivative of the z function is negative, and therefore a negative times dz by dy, that will be a positive number. And that means that the gravitational force will pull you into the positive y direction. Again, that's exactly what we expect. Gravitational force should point that way and pull you into the positive y direction. And so that's how you can relate in your mind these partial derivatives, the gradient of the potential energy function, with the gravitational force. Picture a, a park with rolling hills and think about how the gravitational potential energy uh, is related to the gravitational force at different points on those hills and then think about how those are related uh, to the derivative.